Good morning, everyone. Have you always wanted to drive a really long distance very comfortably and only do it with one friend or maybe some friends that are the size of backpacks? This is the car for you because this is the 2019 BMW M850i xDrive. All right, so it's all wheel drive. It's the fast motor. It's the 4.4 liter twin turbo with uh, 523 horsepower, 553 foot pounds of torque. And uh, the M package adds a little bit of cooling stuff to it. Um, it's got an oil cooler, a bigger fan, and the mobility kit, shadow line trim. Um, so it looks a little better. It's got a different trim package. That's $1,800 package. Uh, this car comes with quite a lot standard, especially for the money, which we'll get to during the drive. Base price on this is $111,000. This one is listed at 119. Options are $3,000 carbon fiber roof, um, the $1,800 cooling package I mentioned, the comfort seat package, which has uh, ventilated front seats, heated seats, heated armrest, and also something called, oh, sorry, <laughs> mobility kit, um, remote engine start. Uh, the only other package on this car besides destination is glass controls, which are these, um, which we'll talk about soon. So you get a lot in the standard package of this car. Um, of course, as you select a higher and higher um, trim level in a model range, they dump more and more things in. Um, the things it doesn't come with, Apple CarPlay in BMWs is an $80 subscription, which is a bummer. And also, it has a lot of tech. This car has a ton of technology we'll talk about doesn't have radar cruise control. For that, you need a $1,700 driver assistance professional package. This just has like lane departure warnings um, and some other stuff. So we will talk about all that on our drive. Let's see how she do. As I turn around, we will talk about the rear steering on this car. Uh, it'll steer the rear wheels two and a half degrees. Makes U-turns and parking very easy. Very easy. <laughs> it's a fast car. It, it's a fast car. Uh, let's get it out of the way. 4.4 liter, twin turbos, of course. Power, 523, 553 torque. Um, torque kicks in at 1800 RPMs, very low down. Becoming kind of the standard for BMW, whether it's uh, six cylinders or eight, they make torque below 2000 RPM. Uh, this does have a really nice power band to it. It doesn't just hit you all at once. You know, you don't just get like this wall of torque and then it's flat. It feels like a very progressive build, which I really like, especially in a lug luxury Grand Tour like this. I want that progressive speed. I want to sit back a little bit, kind of like a, a Bentley Mulsanne. Um, for those of you who know, we, we've all driven and owned a Bentley Mulsanne, of course. Something I don't like real quick, the lane departure is very aggressive, and the only way to turn it off is uh, to go into the menu and use the selector for it. This car does a great job of um, putting nice looking hard buttons where you need them and controlling the things that you operate a lot, like the cooling system, the fan, the temperature, the seats. Those are all hard buttons. You can also uh, use the puck to control them. But I think that's really smart. Too many companies are putting everything in a touch screen or everything um, into the computer where you have to use like a mouse system to control it. And I frankly, I adjust my temperature like a menopausal woman. I, I change my temperature like I'm going through withdrawals and I don't want to have to go into a menu all the time to do it. So I just have the up, down, up, down over here. But the lane departure is hidden in the menu. So every time I turn it on, I have to, I have to change it. I could probably change it and save it as like an individual mode. Um, I haven't figured that out yet, but it's just something I noticed. The gauges are very clear. I have always been skeptical of digital gauges in, in, the, in the center. Uh, sometimes they're way too bright at night. Sometimes they're too reflective or they're angled the wrong way. Um, they don't have enough of like a shelf hat over them. So you, you get blind, um, sorry, the sun hits them and you can't see anything. These do a really good job. They auto adjust the, the brightness. Like right now the sun's coming in towards my face. I can see them perfectly clearly. But when I drove under a bridge or it got dark, I noticed how quickly the gauge brightness dimmed. 
and it did it impressively and it got it just right. It was the perfect amount. Um, didn't affect my night vision negatively. Didn't get, uh, didn't get too bright. It's a good system. Center screen is bright, it's very clear. They've angled it the right way. I haven't been in a position where the sun hit this and I couldn't see it. Um, I have been in a position where the sun hit the puck and <laughs> shined light directly into my eyes because it has all of these like tilted glass mirrors in there. Um, that's That was a little annoying. I actually had to cover it with a laptop cover. So we'll get to that in a second as well. Uh, <laughs> I had to cover it. So if you could get that in like a black and not affect the touch sensitivity, which is very good, that would be excellent. Um, so that moment of music will bring us to the next topic of this car. Stop. Gesture control. BMW is, tr is trying to be, and in some ways is, like at the front of the technology frontier with cars. Um, they are putting a lot of technology into these. Like for instance, if you pull into a parking spot with this car, you can activate a parking assist program that will back you out of that parking spot totally on its own. You know, it follows the breadcrumbs, which would help people who are uh, timid at backing up, which is a big pet peeve of mine. When you see someone just slowly inching back in a parking spot and you're like, go, you have plenty of room, go, go, and they don't. If they hit the button, maybe it'll help. How many people will use it? I don't know. but because they're trying to cram a lot of tech into these cars. And for the most part, it does a good job. Voice activation is good. Um, it, it, reads, it reads my voice very well. The touch screen you can write on read my chicken scratch perfectly well. It's got a lot of tech, but they've added something called gesture control, which is you can do certain things, uh, control certain systems just by moving your hand. For instance, if I do this, the volume goes up. If I throw kind of a peace sign, it mutes or unmutes the stereo. Um, there's one to go to a home screen or to go to next track. It's impressive, but if you guys saw my Instagram, the drag race of volume control is won by just using the knob. All I have to do is reach out, turn the knob, volume goes up and down, right? The gesture control is, it's a cool piece of technology. Uh, but I think they can't put too many functions in it because too many hand gestures would be seem redundant to the computer. And also, as you saw earlier, I was sitting here talking and it just started to play music. Sometimes you don't want to do that. Other things that do that, the voice activation system. If I say, hey, BMW, it asks me what I want, like Siri. I don't want anything. Um, now that's fine, you don't say that very often, but if you're talking about this car and you just say the letters, it activates again. So it's kind of like being around a kid and you have to spell the bad words uh, or the things you're talking about so that the kid doesn't understand. You know, you don't want to say pony for a birthday party because the kid will get all excited. You have to just be like, oh, we're going to get a P-O-N-Y, you know, and then when the kid takes a nap, we're going to have S-E-X and, you know, you have to do that kind of thing. So I had to kind of work around talking about the BMW too much. Materials, they feel really nice. Uh, the leather feels good. I like the combination of bright faux aluminum, brown leather, always makes an interior look like it's worth 50% more than it is. Um, I like the bright work on the vents. Hard buttons are pretty good. I think this interior would age pretty well compared to BMWs in the past. My complaint with them was usually, it was just kind of a sea of black plastic. Um, so I like that they've brightened it up a little bit. Of course, that's selected in the trim. Pretty good looking inside. Really like the door cards. Architecture is very good on that. Downsides. Um, there's not a lot of room. I mean, this is the compromise of having a low slung, you know, silky, slinky uh, coupe is that the roof line is low and the seat can't go that low. This is full down, full down on the seat. And I have four inches above my head. I'm only five foot 10. So if you're a taller person, you're gonna have to lean back more and the room, uh, headroom is gonna be a little bit cramped for you. Uh, strangely, the seats, which look really nice uh, and work well, or sorry, the heating and cooling work really well, they're not that comfortable. 
I've played with the adjustments, which are lumbar and um, the wings, bolsters. I've played around with that. I've played around with the angle. I think it's just uh, too firmly padded. If it broke down a little bit after you owned it, it might soften a little bit, but it's just not as comfortable and well contoured as other luxury cars I've sat in. And when you have a GT car, the seat comfort is kind of important. It's kind of a bummer. Uh, it didn't cause any problems on a long drive. It's just, I don't know. It, it, I didn't sit. I didn't sit down and go, perfect. You know, that's that's perfect. Exceptional U-turn. 235s in the front, 275s in the rear, and this has PS4s. So, obviously, it's really fast. Obviously, it's a very fast car, because that's what numbers are. That's what math is, if math still exists. You have over 500 horsepower, you have over 500 foot-pounds of torque. This thing does zero to 60 as fast as a Bentley Continental GT, which costs more than twice as much. Now, what you have is a GT car, like a Bentley, um, not quite as much prestige, of course, not as opulent inside, but very comfortable, very functional. I'd say pretty striking in here, and it's just as fast. Transmission is an eight-speed automatic. It shifts pretty quick. I, you know, yeah, you could say PDK is faster, but you don't need a race transmission in this car. I mean, this is 4,400 pounds. It's, it's 4,400 pounds of commuting braggadocio. Uh, this is, you know, a parking lot, parking lot badge contest with people that show up in S-classes and LCs and those kinds of things. This is meant to bring one person, really, uh, to their office or to their summer place or to a vacation quickly, comfortably, and it does a good job of that. Steering feel, um, the weight is nice, the accuracy is nice. I think it's a little better than like the 335i and the 335 ISs I've driven lately, like the, from 2017, uh, 2016 that I remember from some other one takes. Steering feels a little better than that. If you really start pushing it, you kind of lose that a little bit. Um, the, ra the ratio of speed is fine. Wow, that truck's getting real close to the wall. That would work out well. The speed is fine and the feel is okay. I'm just gonna do that whole section again. Gosh, this road is way too busy. Uh, steering feel, pretty good. Uh, I think the speed is good. I think the weight of it is nice. It feels really accurate um, on the highway around town. I have no complaints about that. If you get into the curves really, really hard, uh, yeah, it starts to kind of numb it a little bit. It is better than some cars I've driven from like 2016, 2017, like 335Is, um, M235Is. It's better than that, which is an improvement for BMW. It's what we needed. We needed them to step up their electronic steering game. Perfect? No. Is it a race car? No. Is it a performance car? Not really. This is a fast GT car. I, I also wouldn't call a Bentley Continental GT a performance car. I would call it a high performance Grand Tour, which is a different thing. It just means it can go real fast from A to B. <laughs> one, one thing that's kind of weird in this car, when you turn the rear steer, which helps in low speeds, I don't know, you notice it in this car more than in others. The only other car I felt like, I, I felt a similar um, sensation is the uh, La, um, Ferrari Lusso, which basically what it does for, again, those of you who don't own or have driven or thrown uh, away a Lusso, it feels like the back end is drifting around a corner. So other cars I've driven that have rear steer you just notice the tight radius at slow corners. And then as you go a little faster, it just disappears. Um, it just feels like the rear end is fixed. With this car and with the Lusso, as you go around a corner, even in a canyon or something, it feels like the back end is being brought around for you. I mean, it, it is, but it, it feels more like, like a, a fire truck with uh, the steering in the back. You know, it feels like one person's turning the front, one person's turning the back, and it pivots around the corner. Just more noticeable. Something to note. 
right, well, I'm sorry that wasn't a more dynamic, exciting drive. Uh, it is commuting hours right now. The roads are pretty busy and there's not that many twisty roads up in this county. But ultimately, this car is not for slicing and dicing canyons. I mean, it would do a fine job of that. And if, you, if your house was up in the hills, you'd have a pretty enjoyable drive every day. What it's really for is driving on the highway comfortably, quietly, just zooming along like a magnetic train, just like a beam of light, just whew. Obviously, we don't have the Autobahn here. If we did, this would be an excellent vehicle and you can, you can feel and like smell how easy it would be to go fast for long distance in this car. Of course, that's what a car like this should do. Which brings us to the competition because there are other cars that advertise that they can do that as well. Um, main competitors are the S-Class, LC500, and the upcoming E53 AMG, which is not out yet. So the S-Class starts at $125,000. This car, if you added all the options I found on the internet, would, I think, top out at like 130. So this thing, with every bell and whistle, basically the same amount of speed, most of the same tech as Mercedes, I'm sure they call it different things, but ultimately you'd have a fast car that has radar cruise control um, and lots of shiny screens and bits, maxes out at 130, and you're just getting started in an S-Class. LC500 starts at 100. Um, I think it's a better looking car on the outside. It'll age better. This car looks formidable. It looks tough, but it, you know I won't look back on it the way we do the old 8 series. Um, LC though is behind in technology. You have to use their weird mouse thing, touchpad. I don't like that. BMW's what BMW has done well is they've given you options. You can touch the screen if you want to. You can use a scroll wheel if you want to. For certain things, you can use the pad if you want to. Voice control in this is almost as good as Siri. So that's the best thing to do. Um, so the LC500 is prettier on the outside. Not quite as pretty inside, I think. And um, a little behind in technology. I think the Mercedes products are more beautiful inside and outside a more uh, memorable design in both regards. But if you go to the S-Class, you're spending a lot more money. You could drop down to something like the E450. Beautiful car, I really like the design. You get 200 less horsepower in the E450. E53 uh, upcoming will have a um, turbo inline six, so it probably won't have as much horsepower. Do you need all of it? No. Did a lot of you just say, of course? Well, for you, you'd probably have to get a car like this. So what BMW has done is put a lot of smart technology in a car that is priced between, between its competitors in a very smart way. Um, just for the odd person that says Porsche 911, it's not gonna feel as luxurious inside and it looks a little more common because the design is so, uh, the designs haven't really changed. So. It was a lot. Hope it was informative. If you're shopping for one of these or something in the market, I think you have a lot of information there. And uh, thank you guys for watching. Check out the podcast and watch blipshift.com slash TST for more shirts coming this month. See you guys later.